Hi guys, we're going to take a look at an Eastwood VersaCut 60 plasma cutter today. Steve here has uh, become an expert with using this thing and other welding tools. I've watched him a little bit, so I, I know just a little about it, but he's going to give me some instruction about just exactly what this thing is, how it works, how to use it effectively. We're going to plow through this piece of I-beam and hopefully I'll be able to make a smooth cut uh, under Steve's instruction. So watch with me and learn and let's see what we come up with. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown on some of the safety items that um, are recommended when you're doing this and um, some of it is a little above and beyond but it's personally what I would recommend using as far as um, safety items go. Um, number one is a pair of leather gloves. They don't have to be super thick um, enough to protect you in case you know you get a, a bad cut and it kind of shoots back at you. Um, these are just uh, I think deer skin, regular run-of-the-mill leather gloves. Um, of course safety glasses. I have a couple different varieties. Uh, you can wear safety goggles if you want. If I mean if you want to go above and beyond, uh, every little bit helps. Um, obviously having a properly rated safety glasses is, is very important. I so, but just a question now, the, the safety glasses is when you're working with the metal, when you're actually doing the cut, you've got something else, right? Uh, no, I wear the safety, oh, I wear the safety glasses even when I'm, even when I'm cutting because um, I, I also wear a, a welding hood that I have that has auto darkening. But when you get done with the cut, when you lift it up, especially like with welding, um, there's always going to be something that's hot that might pop. Yeah. So it's, it's good to wear safety glasses. Um, I really like this brand, um, Edge. I've just fallen in love with them. They're great. They're comfortable, but um, I really, really like them. Um, and then uh, you can choose to wear the auto darkening or just a welding helmet. It's, I, I have the auto darkening. I turn the sensitivity down. So right before I make my cut, I can actually see what's going on and then when you get done the light um, will shut it off and then it goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the auto darkening. I, I also have um, just a normal pair of cutting goggles. Um, these are okay. They're, they're not the most comfortable but I mean safety trumps comfortability yeah. every time. Um, Earplugs, I, I like these. Um, I also have uh, over the over the ear style these you can't really wear with the welding helmet you can wear more with with these obviously um, the most important thing that I found for for doing any type of cutting or even welding is you get a lot of fumes you get a lot of dust build up um, I wear a particulate mask and obviously you can see the color difference so yeah these are not cheap uh, particle masks they're, they're actually pretty strong capacity, I think, aren't they? Yeah, these are, I think, these are like the, the second or third step up. The, the regular ones don't have this little flapper. Um, the only problem with these ones is, is um, with the flapper being open, there is a little bit of um, possibility that something can come in, but every little bit helps, um, especially when you're doing this type of work. Um, yeah. As far as that goes, uh, long sleeves, I would say, is, is pretty important if you don't have like the leather coat um, and then obviously pants and a good pair of boots good so. okay well let's uh, show me what to do okay uh, before we get started on actually using the plasma cutter I wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown of, of a lot of the parts and pieces to have on hand that um, are really important just in case you know something happens um, wire brush these are really, really good to have on hand. I'll explain that later. Um, chipping hammer is good. Um, the plasma cutter itself, um, it's the Eastwood VersaCut 60. And um, it's a 60 amp rated plasma cutter. It comes with a, uh, a standoff guide, basically, to kind of keep your distance at a set uh, minimum. I bought some extra ones. These ones are a little bit better. Um, they come with a two prong. Um, I've got those extra electrodes, extra air diffusers, extra tips, 
And this is a, uh, another guide, basically what it's for is to kind of help you make straight lines. There's also an attachment that you can use on this to um, uh, make a preset location basically away from this and you can make circles. Um, that's some of the stuff that I would recommend having on hand. And Eastwood Verse Cut 60 Plasma Cutter. Um, pretty self-explanatory to set this thing up. You got your power cord. Um, you got your air supply. This actually comes with a, a straight uh, air line that comes right out of the back of the machine. I didn't like that. I put a little short nipple and I put a, a 90 so I could basically plumb this line in in the back coming straight down. Um, you got your um, your hose attachment itself. It, it comes with a um, different style attachment on it. You've got a um, your electrode line that you have to hook in, your ground line that you have to hook in, and then uh, everything's pretty self-explanatory. It's really, really easy to hook up. Okay, so I'm all geared up to make my cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off right here. Um, I've ground down a spot down to bare steel. I've got my ground clamp. Uh, this is 5 16 I've got the amperage output set at uh, 45. Um, I'm going to keep my wire brush handy and basically what I'm going to do is when I get done with my cut, I'm going to clean my tip off. I found that that has greatly extended the life of my, uh, of my tip and my electrodes. Um, basically what I'm going to do is it's going to be a short cut. This is only about uh, two inches long. It's not going to take me very long. It's probably going to take me like less than 30 seconds to breeze through this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and uh, I'll give you guys some techniques and tips on how to do that. I'm doing it freehand. I don't have a guide. Um, I'm pretty confident in what I'm doing. Um, basically, one of the things that I can say is you get a lot of people that want to start a cut right in the middle. You're going to get a lot of blowback up. You're going to burn through your tip really, really fast. Start on the edge and work your way in. Try not to have it perpendicular. Try to have it cocked a little bit. Um, a little bit back, you know, handled down just a little bit. So if I was making a cut like this, I would have it to where it blew at an angle away instead of straight down. That has really helped out quite a bit too. Your uh, um, distance away from your cut is very, very important also. If you get too far away, you get too much slag built up in there and it doesn't, the, the air doesn't push it away. So you want to be close, but not close enough to where you're getting blowback. So We'll give it a go. I'm fired up. I got my airline hooked in and uh, we'll do a cut here um, and show you what, what it looks like in action. Okay, so I'm going to be making a cut on this two inch piece of steel. It's 5 16 thick. Just basically going to start here and work my way this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test fire the, uh, the handle to make sure I'm getting air coming out. One of the fastest way to blow through an air diffuser is not have your air hooked up and try and make an arc. Um, and those are probably one of the more expensive pieces to buy for this. Um, make sure you got air coming out. This thing will continuously push air to cool it. And the other thing that I'm looking for is a good clean arc. Um, if I don't have a clean arc on, on first contact, on first try, I stop. I make sure I'm checking everything and I clean it up and, and make sure we're good to go. Air pressure is built up, so I'm going to fire it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop my hood. And I'm going to go right into my cut. Looks good to me. So it cuts pretty clean. There's a little bit of slag built up on the back side. That's um, essentially what your chipping hammer is for. You can just chip it off. Um, and it, like I said, it makes a pretty clean cut. Um, I'll chip that off in a little bit. But one of the other most important things is after I get done with my cut, um, I'll clean the tip. I take my wire brush and I just make sure I clean it up really good, get anything out of there. It works really well when you have the air still going through because it pushes any uh, particulates or any matter out of there. And I just try and keep it as clean as possible. Um, as far as cut techniques and anything like that, 
like I said, I tried to make sure I maintain a good distance away. If I'm too far away, it doesn't cut through all the way. If I'm too close, then I get my slag built up. I also tried not to make sure that I had it at a 90, like this. I make sure that I had it like this. So when it blows, it's basically blowing the slag away at an angle. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to let my father-in-law give it a shot, and I'm going to give him some pointers along the way. Okay, so I've got on my safety gloves, safety goggles, and then this visor. What I don't have is long sleeve shirts, but I'm going to make a shortcut and hopefully nothing will fly back on me on this one. For longer work, I can see the necessity of having something to protect those arms. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, and uh, touch the arc. It's operating, I'm going to flip down and, uh, and go. You're not close enough. Okay, so we're through the cut now and what you may have been able to see is I was having a little trouble getting the arc started and then a little trouble making the cut. What, what was I doing wrong, Steve? So essentially what I, what I was explaining to him um, as he was making the cut is if you're holding, if you're holding this like, like this in the angle, you're not going to get a good arc. That's why I had it set up to where he could use it like this and keep the one stand as a guide and then you can play with it like this as you go. I tried to explain that to him as he as he made the cut. Um, also, um, getting comfortable in your position of where you're at that plays a big role uh, in the cut. Um, body positioning and then just smooth and and steady. You know, just try and make one continuous cut. And and if you have to stop and reposition to move, you know, as you're doing it, that's that's fine. I had a little trouble seeing where I was. Um, yeah, it, it could be the fact that a lot of times what happens is if you if you arc it and you don't get it to go right away, the auto darkening will will darken and then it takes a second for oh, it to okay. light back up. Yeah, um, that that could have been an issue with that. Um, what I wanted you to do on, on this next cut is I wanted you to cut through this a uh, little bit thicker steel here. This is uh, in, in some spots. It's almost half inch thick. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to bump the amperage up just a little bit, not much. This thing will handle it depending on, on your, uh, your angle and, and where you're at. This, this, this machine's actually rated to go up to about 7 eighths. So, well, um, one of the things I noticed with this, Steve, is the cut you made is, is uh, it's actually almost smooth. And the cut I made is, well, not. <laughs> well, like I said, a lot of that comes into body positioning. Um, if you're comfortable and you go to make your cut, um, and, and if you're not comfortable, you're going to, you're going to be moving yeah. around as you go. It's going to take that arc and it's just going to basically do this as you continue to make your cut. Okay. But a lot of times it's good to have something like what was there to use as a guide. Um, or if you have something on the backside here, you can rest your hand and just basically slide it along. That works really, really well for me. Okay. Well, let's try it again. Okay. Okay, well, Steve's got me set up with uh, a few more amps, 45 I think now instead of 40. 50. 50 amps, okay. And then what he's shown me to do is to make sure that these tips are riding right along in here and a little bit of angle. So I'm going to flip down, strike an arc, and off we'll go. Well, Steve, I think the thing that is obvious for me as I was trying to cut this is that it's one of these things you learn with practice, but it, mine, is, mine is not smooth. There's a little bit of, the, the cut is, is not together at the beginning. It, it feels like it just takes practice, but this machine is amazing. Yeah, I, am, I, I really like it so far. Um, I haven't had any issues with it other than a few uh, wiring, <laughs> wiring <laughs> problems and uh, a plumbing issue, but... Um, other than that, it's it's been a pretty good machine. Um, yeah, you've already cut a bunch with it. I mean, you've and yeah. you do good smooth cuts, so you've 
you've learned how to use it. Of course, you've had experience with cutting other things, yeah. so you moved right into this plasma cutter pretty easily. But for a beginner like me, it's not as easy as you think it ought to be. There, it takes some practice. Yeah, and w one of the reasons why I chose the VersaCut 60 is is on the rare occasion I do get into some heavier steel, I would rather have the power than not have it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I chose the 60 over the 40. Um, the 40 is a, is a dual amperage. Um, you can wire it for 110 or you can wire it for 220, but um, it just doesn't cut as, as heavy duty steel. Um, plus with this plasma cutter, I've, I've found that, um, uh, you know, if you, if you just take the little proper maintenance uh, you know things out of the equation you know like like I said by cleaning the tip right, off yeah, that was a good good point I um I, I haven't gone through even the the original tip I've been I probably used it for 30 or 40 hours now and I still haven't gone through the original tip or electrode yeah um, that that is crucial um, the particle mass has been yeah, a huge help for me that. I I could see probably getting sick if I if oh, I wasn't absolutely. wearing it but yeah. um yeah the um, the cut it's it's obviously better than the first one. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. So, um, but yeah, I, I really like the machine so yeah. far. I think Eastwood did a pretty good job, yeah. um, and they, they backed their stuff up pretty well. So. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for taking the time to show me and uh, showing the rest of us along the way. Yeah.